Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to Submarine Fleet Strength by Country 2024. It's from Johnny Harris. I don't think I've ever seen him post a video like this before, but I'm here for it. I enjoy these types of videos. And yeah, we're just going to jump into this. I also haven't posted for six days. I went on holiday and I pre-recorded videos for four of the seven days that I was away. Um, but then when I was leaving the country that I was supposed to leave, a lot of stuff happened and I mean a lot. Ended up missing my flight. So I think the last day or two I would have been able to post if that hadn't have happened. happened. But um, yeah, I just had a lot of stuff going on. Um, missed a flight, had to come back way later, got back pretty much a day later. And yeah, all that happened. But we're here, we're back doing reactions. And yeah, this is the first reaction that I'm doing since I've been back. Hopefully you're all doing well. And yeah, let's just jump into this reaction and see, I guess, how this comparison shows. Also, links are in the description to my Patreon where you can see reactions that I can't post to YouTube. Movies, TV series, all that stuff. Yeah, links are there. But let's check this out. This is every military submarine on Earth. At least the ones we know about. Okay. I've separated them out by each country. North Korea? Oh, Whoever okay. rules Russia's... the waves rules the... I mean, from what I've seen or what I've heard... A country that gets like North Korea or Russia, they have the numbers, but maybe the technology with the majority of the subs isn't great. That's what I've seen. Whoever rules the waves rules the world is a saying that rings especially true in recent years <laughs> as global power dynamics are shifting before our eyes. Iran, what the Submarines hell? represent ocean power. So today, let's look at the 471 known military submarines and which countries they belong to, both big and small. I want to do Here this so that we can see how countries use these vessels not only to protect their country, but also to project power. Of the 43 countries that have subs, most just have small fleets. Spain Less have one sub for a country that's surrounded by so much water and a pretty strong financial country, not like one of the richest countries, but it's got a pretty, I mean, actually I say it's a pretty strong economy. I, I think they've actually had issues recently, but in the grand scheme of things, They've only got one sub. What's happened to the Spanish Armada that I know? Although that was hundreds of years ago, and it is also ships, not subs, but still. Less than a dozen. By the way, experts argue about these numbers. If you want to see our methodology here, you can go to our sources, link in the description, to explore country by country how we got these numbers and specs. And yes, these submarines are to scale. Oh, they're big. These smaller countries want submarines for slightly different reasons than the big countries. For these small navies, having even one submarine is a major level up because submarines are designed to be invisible, to lurk and spy and be ready to attack at any moment. Their great advantage is that your enemy has no idea where they are, so they have to assume that they could be anywhere. Bro, where the hell is Myanmar coming to? What, what, what is Myanmar here? He has no idea where they <laughs> I was not expecting that. They are, so they have to assume that they could be anywhere. These submarines are also Taiwan. much smaller than the ones we'll see later on when we get to the big navies. Oh, okay. And almost all of them have a massive limitation, which is that they're powered by diesel engines that need oxygen to run. This means that the submarine has to go to the surface every so often to run these loud engines to charge the batteries on the sub before diving back down again. This makes these submarines less effective than nuclear-powered submarines that we'll see later. These submarines could stay underwater basically forever. That is, if they didn't have humans aboard that needed to come to the surface for food and supplies. I made a whole video about the fascinating technology and history of submarines if you want to learn more. But let's keep going. So Azerbaijan's got four, but it's four tiny subs. <laughs> okay. Hey, I know this visual is very satisfying and I'm gonna keep showing it to you, but I gotta thank today's sponsor. He's, get, he's getting that bag, securing the bag, baby. Get that, much, get that shmel in and it's NordVPN as well. Shout out NordVPN from for giving, it, for giving him his bag. Appreciate it. And with that, let's look at some more submarines. So that's by Jean again. Strategically, the submarines in these smaller navies are meant to patrol and protect a country's coastal waters, the ocean close by, making anyone think twice before attacking that country. Though Israel we're arriving five. at a bit of an exception to this, Israel. Israel currently has five very modern submarines, two of which can stay underwater for up to a week without needing to take in oxygen, making them stealthier Damn. than the older diesel models and allowing them to travel up to 4,500 kilometers. 
And while all of the subs we've seen so far carry smaller weapons like torpedoes or anti-ship missiles or mines, Israel's submarines can shoot missiles loaded with nuclear warheads. At least that's what the US government believes and has said, even though Israel denies all of this. Israel uses these submarines as defense against the many enemies they have in their region, like Iran, hoping that these nuclear-armed submarines would make Iran think twice before ever striking Israel first. Fair. By the way, those Israeli submarines are being purchased from Germany, a country that is coming up here soon. Ah, oh, this is loud. Norway, Algeria. Germany has six German. super powerful long range submarines of their own, but they also build and export submarines all over the world. So they've, they've only got six for themselves. I guess all six are incredible, but they've got six themselves, but then they just sell all the rest of them. I guess it's just German engineering for you. Just making that money. Here we have Australia, which has a relatively small Australia. fleet of diesel submarines. But this is gonna change soon. Thanks to a historic deal with the UK and US, Australia will soon have super advanced nuclear powered submarines. They're buying this from the United States. That is chunky. This is all a part of the US's effort of arming and strengthening its alliances in China's neighborhood. By the way, this is where you'll start to see us moving into more powerful navies. Singapore, Pakistan. These navies use their submarines not just to protect their coastline and coastal waters, but to project power in their region. So you'll start to see bigger and more advanced diesel submarines, but we'll also start to see submarines that run on nuclear energy, like these French and British subs. So they've got like these, I guess, I guess these are the ones they're on about. The, the bigger ones are the nuclear ones. The 10, the United Kingdom, 9, France. These submarines have a nuclear reactor on board that breaks apart atoms. Oh, I don't think it is actually. I think it's just, it doesn't really matter the size. Maybe it's, yeah, they just happen to have bigger ones and smaller ones. And creates an immense amount of energy that heats up water and powers the submarine. It could do this basically forever without having to go to the surface for air. This process also makes oxygen and drinkable water for the sailors. Wow, that is crazy. And what is even crazier is we've just got past France and the UK. We're not even halfway through this video and we're at countries with te plus 10 subs now. So I don't know what countries are gonna come up. Obviously you're gonna have the US, China, Japan's not popped up. Mexico, would they have some? I don't know. They've not popped up yet. So there's a lot of countries still to come, but I guess we'll see. North Korea, of course. A nuclear reactor on board is a game changer for South Korea. Because it allows them to silently patrol the seas, traveling long distances and projecting power to Greece? regions that are important to them. The fuck? Here come the fleets of Greece and Turkey. They have a similar number of subs because both countries see securing their water as very important. And while they don't have nuclear power plants on board, both countries oh. have subs that don't require as much oxygen as typical diesel subs, allowing them to stay underwater for much longer. This is also where you start to see submarines that India. are equipped with the most powerful weapons of all. <clears throat> India currently has at least two submarines that, as far as we know, are not only powered by nuclear energy, but can also launch rockets with nuclear warheads on them. They have a range of around 700 kilometers, and they're working on two more, which could potentially increase that range to more like 3,500 kilometers. What the fuck? They're also planning to build a fleet of at least six modern attack submarines that are quicker and that are meant to accompany and support these nuclear armed subs. Though it's hard to know the full picture because a lot of the details from the Indian army are kept secret. If you want, you can look at my sources for more details on this reporting. What I find so mad, like India have such a strong military and they've got, the GDP is, they've got one of the highest GDPs, but then per capita it's so low. So obviously they've got this GDP, so they've got all this money that they can spend, but then they've got none of the money that they're really spending on, I guess, the people. Because they've got a, stru like a stupidly strong military, like very strong. They've obviously got a huge military as well. And they've got all this money, but then per GDP, it's just like, okay, this, the, like, how does it equate to this? I guess they just focus all their, all their money onto the Navy or the military in general, um, because their fleet just seems to be growing very quick and getting stronger and stronger. Here comes Iran. 
They don't have nuclear capabilities on their submarines, but they do have a lot of subs. These four big diesel-powered submarines, and at least 15 of these mini-subs. They use these to patrol their coastal waters, through which a lot of valuable oil flows. We've got six countries left, and this is where things get really big South really fast. Korea. Here are two countries that have a lot in common. Both are high-tech economies, both are close friends with the United States, both are deeply reliant on the ocean. And crucially, both countries are surrounded by rival countries with strong navies. One of those neighbors is the Hermit Kingdom of North Korea. We don't know how big North Korea's fleet is, for obvious reasons. Experts think they could have as many as 85 submarines, but here I'm going to visualize a more conservative estimate of 36 submarines. A lot of this info is gleaned by satellite imagery on naval bases like this one. But regardless of the specific number, we do know that it's a pretty big submarine fleet. It rivals some of the great powers, at least in terms of numbers. But experts disagree about how functional all of these subs really are. Some of these boats are at least 50 years old. It has around eight diesel subs capable of long-range patrols. And then they have these two. They're diesel powered, and even though they can't stay underwater for more than just a few days, they do have the ability to shoot four ballistic missiles armed with nuclear warheads, with a likely range that could easily reach Japan or even Guam and Hawaii, a what part of the United fuck? States. Now we're Damn. moving into the big three <clears throat> navies, the countries that use their subs to project power at each other and around the world. China has 58 submarines. China's number three. I assume with China, they've got a lot of high-tech ones, though. Compared to, like, Russia, I assume Russia will have the numbers, but a lot of them will be older as well. Six of these subs are capable of firing rockets with nuclear weapons, and six more are attack submarines powered by nuclear energy. But the majority of China's submarines are still the older, diesel-powered oh. kind. I'm wrong. But not for long. What China's oh. rivals see when they look at this fleet is more like this. In the next six years, China's fleet will include at least five new nuclear-powered subs. Two of them are going to be able to launch ballistic missiles with nuclear weapons on them, and three of them will be able to launch cruise missiles. They're even getting Russia's help to build a new, extra-quiet, extra-stealthy ballistic missile sub that the U.S. is worried about because it'll be nearly impossible for them to track. They're doing this in part as a response to the U.S. selling this submarine technology to Australia. But it's also a part of China's bigger goal of being a global superpower like the U.S., who can project power to every ocean in the world. This will be difficult for them, first and foremost because the U.S. and its allies have created a chain of military installations here in the Pacific. <coughs> this allows them to track Chinese submarines trying to leave the region. But it will also be difficult because China lags quite a bit behind the U.S. when it comes to creating stealthy submarines. It's a gap that they are working hard to close. Russia has Russia. the second largest fleet, 62 submarines in total. We've just made a massive leap. This fleet is a huge step up from China's. Half of the fleet is powered by nuclear energy, and 12 of these subs can launch nuclear weapons, something that they remind the world of by conducting these tests that show off their subs launching. These are from their flipping subs. I remember seeing a video, I think probably a few months ago, maybe a year ago. I think it was just in my own time. Just videos of like missiles leaving subs, and it's such a wild thing. You just randomly see a, a missile popping out of the water. It's so ridiculous, but damn, they go, I mean, obviously they go high, but they go really high. Something that they remind the world of by conducting these tests that show off their subs launching these rockets, obviously without the nukes on board. These other subs are attack submarines, which are quick, hard to track. They can launch... Was I wrong with Russia then? Maybe Russia have just a really strong submarine fleet then. Because so far it all seems... Very powerful. Missiles with a range of 600 kilometers that are precise and able to hit a land-based target on the east coast of the United States if they were here in the Atlantic Ocean. And this gets to a really important <coughs> use of submarines at this level, their ability to lurk around the globe. 
Russia quietly sends its nuclear-armed subs to key regions that puts their enemies and rivals in range. It's a part of their nuclear deterrent, the threat that if they are attacked, they have the capability to strike back with nukes, and no one can know exactly from where. In recent years, Russia shocked the world by unveiling this long-range nuclear-powered torpedo called Poseidon. It can travel 185 kilometers an hour underwater, and it can hit targets as far away as 1,000 kilometers. I was so wrong with Russia, damn. Oh, and it apparently carries a 100 megaton nuclear warhead that can create a radioactive tsunami. We're not 100% oh, sure how much of this is real and how much is <laughs> that sounds crazy. Russian propaganda, but it just goes to show you how crazy our advanced technology is becoming here. Okay. The US, how many did the US have? I'm gonna say over 80. Okay, we've made it to number one, the United States. Which I mean, looking at this, you can't even see the US unambiguously. yet. Unambiguously. Yeah, it's gonna be over 100, actually. Is the most powerful submarine force in the world. Not just by- 68, oh, okay. That was a bit off. I guess, I guess, well, yeah, with submarines, it is a lot closer. Maybe, but like he said before, Russia just really, ha like, find, find an importance on subs. Because I guess when it comes to other sort of fleets, in the navy or like who has the most um in in the like, jets and stuff and all these different things tanks all these things i guess the u.s has a lot more than the other ones other countries but when it comes to subs it's actually a lot closer numbers but by capability all 68 of these subs are powered by nuclear energy oh all of them you got some countries that have one or two <laughs> this is all well okay Fair enough. Most of these are attack submarines, which are smaller and quicker. They're meant for battle with their torpedoes and sea mines and shorter range weapons. Like these four submarines can each be loaded up with 154 cruise missiles, missiles that have a range of a thousand kilometers and are very precise. Then we get to these 14 subs, which are huge. You can really see it when you look at them out of the water. Damn. Oh, wow. These submarines can carry up to 24 missiles, each of them capable of carrying multiple nuclear warheads. These are the pictures that I'm on about, the videos. It's so wild seeing them come out. Or missiles, each of them capable of carrying multiple nuclear warheads. These things can travel up to 12,000 kilometers, which is nearly a third the Earth's circumference. And it... What the fuck? That is mad. <laughs> Jeez. I still can't believe every single sub the US has is nuclear powered. Any given moment, eight of these are lurking around the world's oceans, carrying some 720 nuclear warheads between them. And no one knows where. And that's the whole point. They are a foundational part of the US's nuclear deterrent, a constant reminder that attacking the US could easily provoke a response from one of these hidden subs. This is what controlling the ocean really looks like. And it's one of the ways that the US has maintained its place as the most powerful country on Earth. To keep this position, in 2020, the US started building 12 new massive submarines to replace these 14 <laughs> aging nuclear-armed subs. Wow. They will be completed in 2042. So, those are the world's submarines, and a little bit about their strategic application. There's so much more to cover about submarines and naval strategy, so please tell me what questions you have, or what else I should cover on this topic in the future. Thanks for watching. Because I always do these these types of comparison and reactions. This was really like well put together, of course. I mean, what what else could you expect? But damn, very polite of all the countries to line up their submarines for this video. you got to respect the... <laughs> the ability not to fight over that some people like to rearrange their furniture clean their legos or just read a book johnny likes to rank submarines hey man it's interesting but yeah hopefully you enjoyed this reaction and yeah let me know your thoughts on this um from what i take from this obviously the us has the most submarines in terms of numbers but in terms of power also the best which isn't really a surprise um china has a lot and a lot of them are very old some of them are still good Russia surprised me a lot. Obviously, I guess they've got some old ones too, but they definitely have a lot of very strong ones as well. Very strong subs. But yeah, let me know your thoughts. And until next time, like, subscribe and peace.